Good morning, good morning, good morning, and a huge a warm welcome to Carnation Crafts. We're live in the Carnation Crafts studio, and as always, it's lovely to have your company. We have got the most gorgeous crafters select from Carnation Crafts, and it is called the Beautiful Garden Die Set. It is big and bold and gorgeous. You can find it on the Carnation Crafts website under the item number 230819, show price today of 29.99. It is the deal of the day, 295 UK P and P, but at midnight tonight, it will go back up to 34.99. It's absolutely huge and it's so cute. It's so lovely, but it has been incredibly popular. We're already at over 30% and we haven't even gone live yet. It's very, very exciting. Good morning to you all. There's loads of you here. Hello, lovely people. Um, yeah, lots of you have already been on. You you have, you've, you've gone faster than we have this morning as far as uh, going live is concerned, but it is still available. It will only be available at that price until midnight. And that's of course, if it doesn't sell out, which it may well do. So 230819, beautiful garden die set, uh, at show price 29.99, normal price 34.99, 295 UK P and P. This is designed to work with the Wild Wonders collection, although it doesn't have to, um, but you can use elements of that and that's what I'll be using in demo this morning. It was just ni really nice with the other expansion pack that we did. Was it a well? Yes. What was that one? That was from Wild Garden. That was the Wild Garden expansion pack one that we did. It would look beautiful with that. Also, just to let you all know that Miss Taz has got a problem with her ear this morning. So it sounds like I'm shouting. It's because she can't hear anything. Uh, and we can talk about her without her knowing the things. Right, I'll just say hello to you all. And then we are gonna get on with the boards. Good morning, Karen Vincent. Good morning, Yvonne. Good morning, June. Good morning, uh, Michaela. Good morning, Sue. Good morning, uh, Carol Hart. Hey, up. Good morning, Sue Philipsicki. Good morning, good morning, good morning. And then we have got Angela. Hello, Pam Lillington, Lorraine, Annie, Savvy Crafter, Mandy Chapman, Mandy Motley, Meadowlark. Linda Poland and Shaz. Good morning to you all. June, will there be a vignette for Beautiful Garden? I'm going to show you it now. It's so cute. Um, loving this die set, Eileen. Yeah, it's great. It's just a bit of fun, right? It's a bit of fun. It's lovely. Um, Eileen is wishing Taz a speedy recovery uh, from her poorly ear. Uh, good morning, Jill. Good morning, Tricia. Good morning, Merjam. Uh, good morning, Sue Martin. Um, <laughs> Stop the fire in my pants, Sue Martin, exactly. Uh, and then over on uh, the Tubes of the Year, we've got Sue as well. Susan Green, Neil, hello, and Savvy Crusher, tell us the card, base card when you make the big square one, please, and thank you. Good morning, Carla and all from Julia. I am a newbie to Carnation Crafts. Welcome, 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 Julia. It's a beautiful world to enter into. It really is. So what are we getting? We are getting the beautiful garden die set. It's a lovely big die set. It's a beautiful shape on it. It's got the most amazing little pit marks in it so we can do so many things with it. There's lovely ways of us doing little tuck-ins and various other things as well where we can just pin through because there are tuck-ins. So let's have a look at the board so you can see what you get. Look at this. It's just beautiful. Such a good size for a die. I love big dies. You know I love me and my chunky cards. So this is just beautiful for it. In height, we're looking at 19 centimeters uh, and probably at its widest point, I would say about 15, 19 by 15 at its widest point. We've got the beautiful gnomes, which are just very happy and very cute. And then we've got obviously your clovers, your four leaf clover kind of things. You've got your little uh, stitch. This is really, really cute in two different ways. You can see the little grass coming from it. It can be used as a, a signpost. It can be used for them to stand on, to sit on, to do all of the things. But actually we can also flip it and use it almost like a seat as well, which is really sweet. There's different ways of playing with it. Carnation have given us a grounding device. We already have a grounding device, so you never have to worry about this looking like it's floating midair. They have given us that already. 
we're already on the starting point. Then we've got your gorgeous spade and your trowel as well. So you can see there's an awful lot in here. All of your vignettes are on the Carnation Crafts website, which is www.carnationcrafts.co.uk. It is deal of the day today, so press your red button and that will take you out to, to the items for it. And then you go for your downloads, as always, which is on your banner menu, downloads, free downloads, and then you can go and find the beautiful garden. You can either use a search panel or just your drop downs and you'll find everything you need. Um, Gosh, there's lots of you here. There's lots of you here. I'll come back to comments in a second because there are so many. Uh, Charlotte, though, did say, will this fit onto a seven by seven card? I don't know inches. <clears throat> oh, Miss Taz, give me some inches. Just one second. Let me do it on here. It's just slightly over seven. It's seven and a half in height. So it won't quite fit, but obviously because we've got the mirrored vignettes, if you were to do it on a seven, you could have this part of the card uh, as an extension on the card as well. So you could, but it's not gonna go in a seven by seven envelope. So let, if I put it that way, that, that's probably more fair. So that is that, and we are gonna look at some finished samples, but I want to let you in on something very exciting. Carnation are launching a new thing. I love it when Carnation launch new things, more ways to play. So we have got the cutest Carnation Crafts enamel dots. They are gorgeous, perfect pastel. Aren't they beautiful? And they are on the Carnation Crafts website, so go and have a ferret. They're brand new. Literally, this is the first day we're showing them. Just awesome all yours to have, so we can make those gorgeous embellishments and little extras on cards. We've been wanting enamel dots for so long from Carnation. We finally, finally have them. April, my Carnation Craft fix at 4.05 a.m. here in the U.S. Wow. Oh, we're glad you found us too. Um, that's okay, Charlotte. I hope that helps. Um, right, shall we demo? Shall we have a look? Actually, let's look at finished samples first so you can see, because other than just seeing mine, look how gorgeous they are. Look at all, all the beautiful, beautifulness that we're getting. So you can see the little gnome sitting here. We're adding in our clovers. We've got the elements here from Wild Wonders. So you've got obviously your little mice, you've got the beautiful bird and all the florals that come from that, that, that collection. It's just cute. So the, the samples that you'll see are with Wild Wonders, but as we know with Carnation, they will go with so many other of your collections. That gorgeous span of leaves with those skeleton leaves, which I love playing with so much. If you, I don't know if you remember um, this collection, but it had the wreath that you could make with those beautiful leaves. And actually that would be really stunning with the little gnome sitting inside the wreath would be gorgeous, right? You could really build on that and create something just texturally really beautiful. So options, options, options. <laughs> So much fun going on, so much fun. I've always, always had a thing for these. I love them, those spam leaves, we'll play with those in demo. I've always loved them, there's something about them and I love that we can put the skeleton leaves on top of them as well. So then we go into our bigot, look at this. How gorgeous is that? Beautiful flow line coming through. Really stunning, right? The idea of using the little uh, sort of electric lines as a washing line with things hanging on them is just beyond sweet. Really, really good. <laughs> I love the fact that he's had his hat cut off and he is actually just a little bald gnome. That's just beyond sweet. Gorgeous for fairy tale stuff as well. And I tell you, this boot would be really good with things like prehistoric friends um, uh, and those elements as well because of all the tuck-ins. But look at the joy that this just creates. It's really joyous. Uh, card making, something with a similar sort of ilk but slightly different is the other side flow line. There you go. There she is. She's very busy doing her gardening, using those mud piles. Just incredible. Really, really beautiful. There's something about carnation. There's something about doing what they do. We can do the very small cards, look, with just the little gnomes. How sweet is that? You don't have to go over complex with Carnation. I really like that about them, the fact that we can actually, we can pare down and just create something quite simple, very sweet, very lovely. Remember, we've got all those nested dies as well from Carnation. There's so many 
card shapes that we've all got in our collection and a card shape doesn't denote what goes on it. So because of that, I can go in and use the card shape from you know, uh, Boho Beauty and and bring the gnomes in for that. I can go in for Summer Pursuits and bring in the gnomes to that. There's so many different ways of, of making these work. So play to your heart's content. I love this next card. Play to your heart's content. Look at that. Isn't that great? Just pulling in the all of the gorgeousness just just pulling it together it's so sweet and again creating what is essentially a wreath with the grass i love that because it's a visual it's not an actual wreath we're not actually seeing the the you know the scope there but those long pointed grass pieces tell us that is a kind of a wreath it almost looks like a nest julia scott how can i purchase please Julia, if you go to the Carnation Crafts website, and that is www.carnationcrafts.co.uk, on the website there is a large red button that's called Deal of the Day, and that's right at the top of the website, and if you click that, you'll find everything there. Um, or you can alternatively search for the code 230819. It's got a show price today of 29.99 because it is a um, special release. It's the deal of the day, but it will go up to 34.99 at midnight tonight, 295 UK P and P. Um, and then you would go to your downloads, free downloads, and go and get your artwork for it for free. So you pay for the die, but your artwork is free. The artwork is all done in house. Then we have got some with your boot shape and I'm going to demo the boot shape for the first card. So we're going to go in, but look at this. <laughs> I love how she just sits here. Just cute as a button, right? And then I'll do a couple more and we're going to get on with a demo. But the hard work that the DT team put in and the joyous results that they give us, they deserve an airing, correct? just so so sweet a massive thank you to the dt team look at the dimension on that see how that sits so proud isn't that just joyous thank you barbara really beautiful love the scope for this and i love the fact that it gives us that idea to bring in alternatives from other collections as well so that we can play i'm just bringing in these finished samples i'm going to try and get three demos done for you today if i can so I'm doing them on uh, more than one at a time, but look at those. Just, <laughs> I love how she is going flying with the bird. Isn't that so sweet? I love that as well. I've always loved that shabby corner. Really, really cute. Finally, we have, look. I love how that gives perspective. It looks like you're walking in, doesn't it? And that we achieve that by using the grounding devices. You've got this as if it's a, a, a kind of a, an archway going through and you achieve that by using your grounding devices. Obviously, we've got the larger element at the front, which makes those the, the gnomes seem like they're further back. Little tricks, really, really easy, really, really good. Um, so they're absolutely gorgeous. Uh, Alison says, are the large card shapes done on the scan and cut? No, they're all, these are all dies. Um, I assume you're talking about the flow line ones which are these. So it is the die that's cut twice and then raising that through with that half wreath that comes in the Wild Wonders collection, which allows you to poke through the little leaves that's just attached in with the card and it flows superbly around. Beautiful example from uh, Sue there. Just really, really gorgeous, right? And we can create the most dynamic pieces. Look at that. It's just incredible. Wash day. Beautiful absolutely gorgeous samples so i hope that helps um eileen what collection is the dormouse from please everything you've seen in samples today and from myself that is not to do with beautiful garden is all from wild wonders um, and that was one of the early collections that we launched on our own tv channel um, so there will be YouTube videos for that if you want to watch the demonstrations for that as well. Just go to the YouTube channel uh, for Carnation Crafts TV and you can go back and look at those. So we're going to go from there and we're going to go to demo. I'm just going to shift this and try not to cause. Right, I just want to have a look at the boot. So where we've got the boot here. I don't want to damage it, but 
there's little pit marks just along the boot. Now, if I get my pokey and I just place that through, okay? So you can see I've got little pit marks and this is one of the things that I'll be doing in demo. We can cut those pit marks and when we cut them, that means we can tuck things behind and it gives a perspective because the fencing looks further back and then we've got your boot further forward and that means we've got loads more ways to play. The same goes for the top of the boot. We can cut this and tuck little birds, the little mice, we can tuck the gnomes, we can do all kinds of things. Nick never leaves anything to chance. He's very, very good at making sure that all our pit marks are in places that are the most useful to us. They're not done by accident. Yes, a lot of them are there in order to help us shape out. That's a big part of Carnation, isn't it? That we are allowed to have as much dimension as we can possibly get. But a lot of the pit lines, and when you're looking at your dies, have a look at your pit lines. What are, what's there and why is it there? Because they're not done by accident. And that means we get to cut into things in certain ways to change the way it crafts. So just, just keep an eye on them because they're really, really useful for that. Um, Diane, I can't find the download anyway. anywhere. It could be that they're putting the downloads on a little later and that will be just to make sure that the, um, the, sales, the sales are going through. You can all get hold of the die and then they may be putting the downloads on a little later. That's something that Carnation sometimes do um, and it's just to ease things off. I'm just going to move this. I do apologise. Right, let's have a look at demo. So we have got the beautiful shape, the beautiful garden. Um, and we've got the card shape cut twice here. I have scored a little bit further down than normal. So normally I would tell you do half an inch and then we're going to, you know, go down. But because if I did half an inch, it would just sit on the top of that fence post. And because of that, I don't feel like I would have enough strength. So I've gone a little bit further down this time just to make sure it's going across the whole stem of that card. But your alternative, of course, is to score it lengthwise wise and have it opening, you know, that way. I just habitually always do it at the top, always have. We get into little crafting habits, don't we? So I'm going to take my red liner off and just push back. Shuffle those together. Place it down, push. My card base all taken care of, no stress, no hassle, all easy peasy. Right, let's then talk about foam tape and height. I'm going on a three millimeter and I'm raising it up. And the reason that I'm raising it is because I'm working white on white on these. And I, the, I, you know I love my white on white. It's just a thing, isn't it? It's beautiful. But the white's gonna disappear because the artwork is so strong but I do need to just separate my white layers and that's why I use the foam tape. So trying to get that as even as I can without putting my great big noggin on screen. Love, love, love gnomes. We all love, love, love the gnomes. They're just gorgeous. Good morning, Yolanda. Hey, Karen Richardson. Hope you're all okay. It's been a busy, busy week. Oh, look, there's a surprise, Miss Taz. I've got glue. Just going to place that down, push, pull, and that's going to get everything where we need it to be. Shirley Taylor, may I ask how wide the card is, Carla? Of course you can. We're looking at just under six inches. In fact, it'll go over, look, because of that piece there. So if you're working from that side to its widest point, it's like six and a quarter inches. So I hope that helps. Uh, beautiful size, isn't it? And I love the shaping of it. And actually you could do so much with that. The, the, the shape of it for me is, is almost evocative of like a haunted house as well. Take the boot away. Obviously once the vignette comes in, it is what it is, but it's got a, a shape of that sort of crooked um, Dracula house, hasn't it? It's really sweet. Right, let's have a look at the things. Now I was talking to you about cutting those pip lines and that's exactly what I've done here. Just let me release my mouse. Right, so what I've done is I've released the pip marks. So I've done it on the boot top there and I've also done it there. 
okay? So I'm leaving that pip and I'm leaving those pip. It doesn't actually effectively matter if that does come away because we're gonna glue it down anyway, but it means that I've now got to be cautious about where I put my glue because if I put my glue at the top of the boot here, I'm not gonna be able to tuck anything in because it will be obviously firmly stuck. And I know that sounds like teaching granny to suck egg, but these are the things that I forget to do all of the time. So I'm just going to place a little bit of Carnation's Everyday Glue. Remember this has got a very low water content. I'm gonna use my applicators. Just take one of these and we're gonna go in. So where I'm gluing, I'm being very cautious about where I put my glue line. I don't want my glue line to go anywhere here and I don't want it to go anywhere here. We only need tiny amounts of glue, but I do need to know that it's stuck. So I'm gonna make very, very clear decisions. I'm gonna have a little bit of glue down here, a little bit of glue on my fence post, and then glue on my heel. I can reinforce with a little bit more on my fence post and a little bit down here. What I'm doing is effectively avoiding the whole midpoint of the boot in order to achieve the tuck-ins. So I can go in and place Make sure that adhesion point is there. Look at that. I mean, to be honest, that's just really powerful, isn't it? Really gorgeous. It's really, really lovely. Um, so you've got all of those pieces. The white on white brings that forward. So if you see where we've got the white on white here and it raises in steps, it almost makes the boot look like it's pushing forward. So we're using the layers in a specific way to give a different visual, but it's also a clean line around the edge of it, which is really, really sweet. And now we're gonna busy it all up. So let me bring in the bits and bats that I have got. So you can see where I'm going. And if you are at home watching this on replay, you can follow along should you wish to. So elements, we've got lots and lots of elements. Am I right in thinking these two mice are dandelion and burdock? I can't remember. I think it's dandelion and burdock. Is that correct, Miss Taz? You are very much correct. Well, I think it's dandelion and burdock as well. <laughs> are we both now like it must, it, no, it querying is. ourselves? Because I swear we looked at it the other day because it was on a 20%. Yes. I love these. Aren't they pretty? Really beautiful little detail elements that are really sweet. There's the ones with three and then the ones with four leaves. And then you get the skeletons that sit on top of them. There's something very, very cute about them. Now, how am I going to work on this boot? Well, what do I want on my grounding device, first of all? And how am I going to play with that? How do I need, um, you know, how do I need to place things to make it make sense? Uh, Linda, I used the glue the other day with my grandson on MDF Christmas decorations, didn't need to use a lot of glue to get a good stick. It's a really difficult thing because when we're talking about the carnation adhesive, because the craft industry itself is saturated with glue, saturated, it, it, I mean everybody, every company sells glue, um, and a lot of us, rightly so, don't really think about glue. Glue's sticky, we use a bit of glue, but actually when we start crafting especially with stuff like Carnation where it's so good and we want to have the really beautiful finished effect, the way we get the tidy effect is using very little glue. In order for that to be able to happen, you need to have a glue that's got a really low water content. And the only glue that I've found that's got the lowest water content genuinely is Carnation's um, because it's got a really quick adhesion point. Um, because the water's just not there to allow it to slip and slide and to get messy and, and, and to do all of that. So that's why it is what it is. And it's a really good price. You get seven bottles, but it just works, right? So now I've got my two little mice. Now, first of all, I know that I'm going to have them placed in the boot. I'm not going to stick them down just yet. But what I'm going to do, where I've got the little pip lines that I cut that I was showing you, I'm just going to stick him in so I can get a visual aid of where I want my two little characters to be on the boot. So just tuck in. <laughs> I mean, come on, these are just ridiculous, aren't they gorgeous? Just sweet. Now, Dawn, it is in Turkey, hello Dawn. 
So then I've got my little corner element and I'm gonna keep that there. I really like it as that corner element on the boot, but it can be used as a tuck in behind those pesky little mice who are having the best of time, the best of fun. So I'm gonna take a tiny amount of adhesion, just two little dots, place that into my corner and just allow that adhesion to hit, okay? I'm leaving the little fronds free. I can tuck in that way. I can make choices with composition as I'm going. I don't need to commit to anything. And, and this is another reason why um, having that quick adhesion is important because I can make that stick instantly, but I can also leave these pieces free so I can change my composition as I'm going. What that means is at the end of the card, I can still go in and stick that down at the end if I want to post it. But for, for the process of making the card, I give myself freedom to play and to choose. So that's why I do things the way I do it. I hope that helps. Now let's work on this one first and then we'll go and work up to the top. So I'm not sticking him because I need to know composition wise, where am I going with height? Height is important. How am I going to build the height behind him without drowning him? So all I'm going to do first is get this wee floral, find a point at which the working is hidden, the line is clear for the card base, and he is still clearly poking the top. Now what we're doing here, we've got obviously the white, and that does cool the tones a little bit, so it allows him to pop. It's really, really easy to do these things, and it's just a little bit of thinking, but I don't want him to just you know, just have that. I want to add in some color pops as well. So I'm gonna go in with some purples and some yellows, which I love together. Purple and yellow are just pretty as a picture. So little amounts of adhesion, and I'm gonna create a little bit of a floral flow line, playing with height levels as I'm going. So my white will be my top, and then I will come in with my yellows and play with height. Little amounts of adhesion poking these flowers through that boot. Remember, I'm not sticking him down until I'm ready. Once I've got all my flow line and I know where I am, and then I can play. Now I've got the larger pieces of grass here as well. I'm gonna actually use that at the top, but just to show you, if you want to build um, sort of height going across and round, you absolutely can. How beautiful is that? Really sweet, isn't it? it gives a really um, feeling of this this old boot just sitting in a, in a field or something and these little mice making a home from it, it's just cute. So that is gonna come in in a little while. Now, I want to use some of my clovers as well. I love these. What a boon to have these as well. Because these, the, none of these are just elements just for this collection, a lot of these, like the clovers, are things that we will use again and again. I need another floral here, because even when I base him up and he's here, I just, I've got one here and then some over here, and it looks, sometimes when we craft and we put things at either side of something, we have something in the middle, if we don't put something at the back, it can appear staged, or I, I can't explain that better, it's almost like we know we should have put something behind, but we didn't because we were being economical or something. There's a visual weirdness about it. So I'm gonna put an added floral in. I'm gonna go for the yellow again. And it will mostly be covered by the little mouse, but I'm okay with that. A hint of it behind is absolutely fine. So just there. So it still looks like I did it on purpose, if that makes sense. Then we're gonna take this little chap now that I've got my flow line going through, tiny amounts of adhesion, pop him in and place. Guys, 50%'s already gone. Carnation have just been in touch. Thank you, Carnation, for keeping us informed. 50 percent has got it's gonna sell out. Um, if you're watching the demo and you're thinking I'll get it in a second you can come back to the demos. This will be on YouTube forever. Um, please don't miss out on it because I know lots of you get disappointed when that happens. 230819 Carnation Crafts website, www.carnationcrafts.co.uk, 230819, or hit that deal of the day button if you're watching live today. Show price $29.99. It's going to go back up to $34.99 at midnight tonight, and it's $295 UKP and P. 
Thank you, Miss Taz. Thank you, for Carnation, for your assistance. Right. I've got my little gnomes. I want to keep those over here. I do need some florals to remain because I want to put some stuff at the bottom as well. But tucking those into that boot so we look like we're sort of growing from it. It's just really cute, isn't it? Um, Sue Dalry uh, Dalrymple, when I first saw this boot, I straight away thought of the nursery rhyme, the old woman who lived in the shoes and all the carnation. Oh, you totally could use all of the carnation white. Sue, I love that idea. Can you imagine the mice from Crafty Little Things or from Naughty But Mice where they're uh, swinging on the ropes? Naughty But Mice where they're swinging on the ropes and they could be using the rope on the boot. Ooh, I love to play. Right, what a job, right? What a job. Just tiny amounts. I'm gonna just move him forward i keep them in there because i want to know visually where am i going what am i doing why am i doing what i'm doing where is it going to seat itself best so if i've got his little head facing forward and it's here i don't want the grass growing from his head i'd rather have florals coming behind it it will make more sense to me but also because his head is facing that way it's nice to have the grass facing that way so it gives it that kind of V. We always like to have those little visual cues and it sits there and gives it just that little aspect and now I can build uh, with these florals as well and just raise them up. So just tucking in, cooling down those tones, placing in behind him little bits. And then now we can become a little bit more sporadic with the florals and we can be a little more wild with the florals because we've got the baseline. I know where I am with my heights. I've got my white on white at the background, which is reflecting through on those beautiful flowers. Everything sort of helps. Uh, Pearl, we don't get to use the code on this item. Not on deal of the days. No, unfortunately not. That is um, their, their place for the whole website. But the deal of the day is already on offer. So there isn't a second discount on it. So then I'm going to place in some extra little pieces and I'm not going to go too wild, but just pushing through just to give those visual, look how pretty they are. They're so gorgeous, these florals. I love Wild Wonders. I loved it when it first came out. Just on that stem line, leaving my flower heads, I can take him out now, leaving my flower heads free so that I can play and have that flow line coming through because they move so you've got that little extra umph with it, just cute as a button. Now let's get him seated. Trisha, the characters from Ponderance Place would look good too. Ooh, the frog from Ponderance Place would be awesome, wouldn't it? I loved Ponderance Place as well. How many collections of Carnation done that are just incredible, right? There we go. Sue says, I know I said I wouldn't, <laughs> but I bought mine at the beginning of the show. <laughs> You've got room for it, Sue. Um, and I totally believe releasing the vignettes later makes a huge difference to check out. And we just, um, it makes sense. And the thing is, because things like the deal of the day sell out, so um, it, everyone needs a fair crack, right? And you can't, you can't do anything with the vignette today because you won't get the die until tomorrow. So it just makes sense. Well done, Carnation, for your thinking hats. Right, now, this little piece that I was talking to you about, this is sort of like a little sty, little signpost that sits, it's cute as a button. But when I was playing with it, I was sort of like, well, do you know what, it's quite cute that way as well. I quite like it to have them, you know, they could be leaning against it kind of thing. It's just sweet. But again, we get to play with height on this as well. If I want my gnome to be sitting on it, I can sit her right at the top, Ignore the mouse for a minute. I can sit her right at the top and that would mean she is literally sitting on it. Or I could pull her sort of to there and it gives it the visual that it's sort of flat, if that makes sense, perspective wise. Do you see what I mean? As if it's a tabletop rather than a flat. It is how you want to play with it. It's just clever. So you've got two options there. I'm gonna place it behind here so I'm just getting a little poke of it. 
because she is taller than my mouse. So I obviously don't want her to cover my mouse because he's cute. So she's going to sort of be tucked in behind those little florals. Not too far in, but a little bit. So tiny amounts. And just place. Now because I'm placing that just where it is behind that leaf, I don't need to ground it because you can't see the bottom point. So it doesn't matter that it's floating because we know visually that, that the, the end of it is somewhere behind that plant so that we can get there's little tips and tricks that we can get around. So she's going to need a tiny amount and she's going to be sitting at this side, as far over this side as I can. I want her little hat poking through for that pop of colour and her little face showing at the top. And then she is playing with the florals that are around her. So really sweet. Uh, so then we're going to start coming in with some height on these florals. Tuck behind her. Okay, a couple of leaves. Just there. My clover is going to come down, so I'm creating my L for my corner. Just sitting through. And now I need to deal with this chap, who's just very handsome, isn't he? Very, very handsome. So I'm just going to just. shape him a little bit, not too much. Now you'll notice on this I'm not using pin flare at any point, I'm keeping them flat and the reason being is if you look at the boot from the overhead and you look at it where it is, especially when we use those pick marks with things tucked in, can you see how it looks like the boot is pushing forward, it looks, it, it, it looks like the boot is coming out, it's almost like that 3D element, it's got that kind of visual to it. If I start puffing out with dimension too much, especially around this curvature of the boot, it's going to, um, it, they're going to sort of stand too far forward. It'll look like, it'll look like the boot's kicking them. <laughs> we don't want the boot to kick the gnome. The gnome is cute, so we're going to leave him flat. Um, have I still got a Dijon? Let me just make sure. So I'm going to place him right at the edge and I'm grounding him on my ground. So I've still got my little mouse in vision. Sorry, my tummy is making strange noises. And then he's got to have his little shovel. I bought a shovel, Miss Taz. It's in my hallway. Look at the gloriousness. Isn't that so cute? All the colour coming through. Isn't it just really pretty? There's something about carnation. So, as you see it coming forward, that boot, that beautiful, gorgeous line of it coming forward, those gorgeous colours coming through. Isn't it so sweet? And the little mice tucked in quietly, so they're just elements. Everything, everything has its own show-stopping point because all of the individual elements are all laid out in such a way that they are all important, but none of it is cluttered cute as a button. Love these. I think this collection is really cute. It's just so sweet, isn't it? Um, just to answer Charlotte, Charlotte, will Pro Paper work with my laser printer? If not, could you suggest suitable papers? So um, I know that there was a big thing in the group about Pro Print, so I'll do it while I'm on here. I think I did do it on Hobby Maker, but I'll explain while I'm here. A laser printer works with heat. It's intensive heat and that heat helps the ink from the, uh, the toners in a laser printer to disperse. A cartridge from an inkjet printer doesn't do the same, it doesn't have heat. So any paper that is made is made with a coating that is appropriate for the printer that it's going to be printed on. If it's going to be a laser paper, then that is going to have some kind of heat protection on it to make sure that it doesn't get ruined. 
whereas the inkjet one doesn't need that, which is why ProPrint is so good on an inkjet because it can have that coating and that, you know, the way it works in order to make it pop. Laser printers, not the same. What's an alternative? I would be more inclined to go for a photo paper, um, something like that. Not the glossy ones, you can get the matte photo papers, something where it's designed to um, allow the colors because obviously when we're using photo paper, it's designed to make the colors in the photos pop. And so that would be my best guess alternative on a laser. I say that with caution because I don't own a laser printer and I haven't tried it on a laser printer. So I say it with a hint of caution, Charlotte. So try and find, um, you know, a, a reasonably cheap pack of photo paper that's for laser printers. So make sure you type that when you're doing it and, and have a go. That would be my best advice. It's a shame that ProPrint work, won't work in both, but it's not designed to. Um, and obviously it's got such a, a power behind it, ProPrint. We all know that it's, it is truly wonderful stuff. Let's go really paired back and let's go tonally cool with this. So for this, I'm gonna focus on the Gnomes rather than on the boot. Just for this one, we'll go back to the boot in the next demo and hopefully I can get all three done for you. So I have got my large square here, which is just under eight inches by eight inches. So beautiful size, absolutely gorgeous. Seven and three quarters by seven and three quarters. So what we're gonna do here is take the score line, push it back. We've got the red line of tape there. Use your pokey. We're gonna use some very, very cool tones on this card. We are going clean, we are going very simple. Down to the baseline on my glass mat so I can see that I'm level. Place it down. I love that card shape, isn't that really nice? I love symmetry, it pleases me. Then this. No color beneath it, but I'm using Carnation's blush paper and I've gone in for the natural. And the reason that I've done that is to allow it to have that clean jump, that clean lift off. Um, I've got a change from just the cold tones of the white. I've got, I'm bringing in the warmer tone of the blush. And the reason that that works so well is it just makes it stand out more options here do i want this to go on foam tape because if i put it on foam tape and i raise it we all know what i'm about to say shadows look at the shadows pretty 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 i'm not going to because i'm going for clean and simple and so i i mean as, as beautiful i honestly i look at that and i just think oh i should have put it on foam tape because that is just beautiful but i want it clean and simple so i'm going to use it almost as an embossed line uh, as such a visual embossed line rather than the actual pop, so just small amounts. Your applicators are always handy, by the way, with your filigree because trying to get into tiny spots like this, I actually can do it with my applicator. Um, and it saves you having to put larger amounts on. So getting that as straight as I can. Look how pretty that is. That's extraordinary, isn't it? Lace work. And then we're coming in just to cool it on there. So I have that beautiful cream around the outside, that blush, isn't it gorgeous? And then we put this on top and we allow it to cool in the center tones because I want a cool card, but isn't that gorgeous in that blush? Really pretty. So I've got my five mil. We are chunking, chunking. Got my five mil. Just try and get that straight. Sit it forward, sit it up. You get that beautiful lift. Um, Linda, I love this die shape and filigree. I've used it on many occasions. It's a really um, visually tranquil filigree. And not all filigree is, but it's very tranquil and very um, clean, crisp. It's a beautiful, beautiful filigree. Uh, so I agree with you. Right, now, what have we got to play with? So you can see what I am using and you can follow suit if you so chose. Can you tell I'm in love with these? 
The great thing about Craft to Select, I know I always say it, but I love the fact that I get to go and play with previous collections um, because um, obviously demonstrating, I, I jump from one collection to another to another and it's so lovely to go back and just breathe it all back in again because they're all so gorgeous. And I love, love, love that playway. So we've got some long lines, some short lines. You can see that I'm working with a gnome, so I'm not going in for height here and I'm not going in for excess. We're playing in cool tones. So I've got my little greens and I'm gonna form a corner. Now I've got choices. Because I've got this sitting here, I can choose to use the skeleton leaf on top of it, which I love, look at that. The impact is extraordinary, but I like the green. I gotta tell you, I really love the green. So what I'm gonna do with it is take these two and I'm going to line them up so they go onto a curvature. So I've got almost a semicircle at the bottom and they're going to long line over my filigree. So I'm just gonna place just a small amount there. I'll overlap there on those two. A little bit more. Follow that line of the curvature there. And we create a grounding device for ourselves. Jam Carnations Pro Print. It's funny, isn't it? Because I didn't realize, genuinely didn't realize that there was a difference between Carnations Pro Print and other Pro Print either. I just thought Pro Print was Pro Print. And it turns out that Carnations is so good and so, sh we shouldn't be surprised, you're absolutely right, but it is incredible. So what we're doing is giving a hint of the skeleton leaves behind. We've got the two coming out, so we're flow lining. In order to make more of that impact, I need to line something at the sides here. I need to allow the room to breathe. We're just gonna allow it to come out. So for that, I've got these gorgeous sort of, what do you call them, wheat? I don't know. <laughs> I'm so good with the names of florals, Miss Tizdaz. She can't hear me. It's all good. I can hear you. It's my oh, job to hear you. She can hear me. Shh, stop talking Wh about her. Whether I want to. <laughs> <laughs> She's so mean. I'm going to come in with these. Create my corner. So pretty, right? You could have a sentiment in the middle of that. It's just beautiful. Really gorgeous. But just to give it a little bit more um, umph. Uh, I'm just going to add in another on either side, just flow lining through. It's just going to make it a little bit bulkier. You could do them at different heights too. Uh, I'm, I'm not interested in creating height too much on this. Uh, more width and sort of shaping out. Just place them through, look. So now we have a beautiful starting point. Never be scared of composition when you know that the best way to start it is your starting point. And by that I mean, have something in mind. So if you're composing and you're like, oh, I don't know where to begin, think to yourself, what corner can I use? How can I make a corner? How can I create an L? What border can I use? Start there, because as soon as you put something down, you'll start to go, oh, okay, now I've got that. Now this makes sense, this makes sense. So don't ever struggle with composition. This is where sometimes I think we do lose our mojo because it becomes difficult all the time. Whereas if we go, okay, well, I need a corner, I need an element, I need something to start with. Once we've got there, we've got a jumping off point now and it'll all start to become easier at that point. Now I'm gonna tuck in some of these wee clovers. Just hither, let me just free my leaf if I can. Let's get you, there we go, tuck that behind. Now I want to bring in some of my clovers just here. And I'm just gonna tuck through, so we're just getting a little bit 
of the grass line come in, filling out this bottom piece. Follow in my lines. Okay, just a pretty point, just a nice little starting point. And then we're going to go in with the big lad himself. He's so handsome, isn't he? Look at that beard. What a boy. Like him a lot, Miss Cass. So, just playing with that hat line. And all you need to do with his hat, just pinch. Can you see how it's just becoming more circular? And that way, he'll just have that little point. And because Nick's put a shade line here, or a light element, so we know that the light source is coming through, when you just wrap his little hat around, it makes it look shinier. Always, always go with Nick's intention, if we can, because it just is always the cleverest. Now... I'm going to put him here and he's having a brew. His little hat is pointing. There's a tiny little shadow playing behind him. I'm going to pop him the little shovel. And that's going to be seated. You're not going to see much of the shovel, but it'll give you a visual that he's got something in his hand, which I am cool and the gang with. And then finally, Take these, get your pokey, preferably without a load of glue on it. Thumb, pull, just to curl, then take his body, push. Same again. Curl, body, push, okay? Actually, I need his body to be that way on this. Ah, crackers. There we go. And then... Place in, allow those wings to be free. Oh, Miss Taz came with me, did you see? Placing on. Just pretty, pretty, pretty cool, clean, simple lines where we don't need to have too much of anything to create something really pretty. That filigree is so gorgeous anyway. It speaks for itself. Try and use your blush papers to just give you some tonal quality uh, and you'll get the most gorgeous effects. White on white can be incredibly beautiful. Sometimes the blush papers just help us because I didn't want lift on my filigree. I don't want the white to eat itself. You know, we have that, that issue with it. Using your blush papers just allows you to get that gorgeous tonal quality. And they do have the three colors of them. So if you're working with something that is in a warm tone, the blush is really good for that, um, the rose blush. If you're working with cool tones, so Christmas cards, then your blue blush is fantastic for it. But like this, if you want to neutralize it, then go for your natural or the vanilla, as I like to call it, and it will give you those um, softened tones, those those buttercream tones. They're really nice. Now let's go mad busy. For those of you who like to do the very full cards, let's do a very, very full card, and then I'm gonna let you all go, because I get my babies back today. They've been away for two weeks, and I'm very, very, very excited that my babies are coming home today. There will be celebrations because I love my babies being home. Right, I've got my card base here. We're working with the same card base, remember? So it's that just under eight by eight. And I've got my red liner. Take this away. To the body. Shuffle through onto your lines. Now, Let's put a mat down so we've got the colour, okay? This time we're, you know, we're basing in with those perfect papers. 
from uh, the collection, the Wild Wonders collection, which I think they're linked to, are they, on the Deal of the Day, Miss Taz? I think they're linked to the Wild Wonders Yes, yeah, uh, so if you card. go on the Deal of the Day yeah. and then scroll down, it says, I think it says something like, you may also like, or similar to. Right, along and those it's lines. got the papers. And it's the first one, and it's the Wild, Win Wild, Wild Wonders. Wonders. God, I lost papers. my head then. Um, perfect papers. They're right there. I saw them. Well done. Thank you. So place, push, pull. And that gets us, I love that colour, isn't it nice? It's like um, a, like a caramel honey colour. It's very, very pretty. Now, I need to call it, because it's just a little bit vivid for me. And this is when we start to play in with shadows. And this is when we start to play in, again, baseline in. Now, if you place this straight down, you'll get the China Plate effect, okay? If you raise it, you'll get the cooler tone effect. So it depends what you want and it depends how you want to play with it. I'm gonna raise it because I want to have the shadows and I want to call the tones. So I've got my foam tape, my trusty, trusty roll of foam tape, Miss Taz. I should endorse this foam tape. And I'm just going to place this on. And this here. So this is a three mil. Christine Brown, sorry I'm late, I've been to the dentist. Don't apologise, gosh. You can always play back whenever you need. I hope the dentist was kind to you. I've got to go, I'm missing half a tooth. Well, <laughs> why are you looking at me like that? I've got half a tooth, it's gone away. Sue Martin, I can hear the lovely Taz clearly today. Now you are a real joke. We've we've started putting a, a microphone on Miss Taz so that she can talk to you too because she is as much a part of this as as as, as you and me at home uh, are. So we get to have Miss Taz as well, which is really lovely. So we've raised it up, we've got some shadow, we've got some lift, and we have got a cooler tone because we're not laying it flat. So when it's flat, it will be uh, busier. When we raise it, we get that shadow play. Mine is ever so slightly off the edge there. I do apologize, I can't lean over. Now, part of the reason that I have raised it is because I don't want the filigree to take over this time. Whereas in the last card, I wanted the filigree almost to be a star. This time, I want to just raise it up. I just want to, to, to make sure that my boot isn't, that we're not getting too busy. Now, part of this helps, and that is just with this um, fence line that comes at the back. It just helps uh, to cool those tones. So it, it's going in there. <laughs> Have some ward. Oh no, it's jumped into my basket along with a couple of other dies I've been debating. A laminar card base, I love that. Um, Sue Dalrymple, you'd love to see Miss Tiz Taz too. She's very lovely. We have had her on air before, haven't we, Miss Tiz Taz? Regrettably. She says regrettably. She doesn't love it. Um, I'm, I'm one of those, it's like the opposite of children. So I should be heard, not seen. It's not true. She's a wonderful human, is our Miss Taz. Right, Rachel McCourt, which lacework die is that please? Rachel, it's the card base from Wild Wonders. So um, Wild Wonders was a collection, like I said, I think we did it, it was just when we first launched this channel, wasn't it? It wasn't the first one we did, but it was quite soon afterwards. Um, we did. And so the first one was Spring Forward, then we did Wild Wonders. So it was the second one. And so it's from that. So basically, if you go to the Carnation Crafts website, which is www.carnationcrafts.co.uk, and just type in Wild Wonders in the search bo box, it will come up with the whole collection. Um, and I'm pretty sure they'll have individuals and the whole bundle. So you'll be able to um, pick and select what you want from there. Yeah, the, um, this, the Beautiful Garden die set is going really fast, just to let you all know. And it is going to go back up to its original price, if there are any left, at midnight. Placing that through, lifted. I want the shadow from my fence. The reason I want my shadow from my fence, <laughs> uh, lots of people saying they want to see you. The reason I want to have that shadow is because it's busy behind. 
So I want to raise it because I want to make it separate from the base. I need to make it separate. And I'm not going to go in with too much detail in this time. So it won't be as many florals and there won't be as much stuff there. And that is simply because I've got a lot going on here. So I don't want to overface it. I will put bits in and I'll build that corner point and we're gonna have the gnomes and we've got the little mouse if I choose to use it and we've got the bowline if I choose to use it, but let's keep it fresh, let's keep it relatively simple. So I've got my skeleton leaves and my actual leaves. I'm gonna take my skeleton, place the last one of the green onto the first one of the skeleton. Now, right way around back short, pretty much the same again. and build. So I just get the hint of the skeleton at the first point. And the reason I don't want the hint of the skeleton at this point is because I've got the filigree. So I just want it at the beginning because it's going to be my corner element. So I'm happy to have that because it gives a hint of this. It's almost like we're drawing it down, but I don't want it here because that's going to be too much. So I'm drawing it away if that makes any kind of sense to anybody at all. So just raising these tiny dots. This is where your applicator is so important. Tiny, tiny. See how I'm going in just here. Tiny, tiny dots. Just making sure I've got some adhesion. Not much. And finally, a little bit there as well. That should theoretically have them all roughly stuck together. If you find they're not, you can always add in little bits on their baselines. I don't think I need to because I think mine are all stuck, but I can just push little bits on that baseline to just help it and aid it. I'll just put it on that one there. Yes, Miss Tiztaz. So the filigree that you've used at the base. Yeah. I found it on the website, so I'll just put the link on YouTube and on Facebook. It's the oversized frame. It's not part of the collection. It's it was the separate. extra, yeah. Yeah, so I'll just put that so it's easier for them to find. Thank you, Taz. She's a good egg, right? So, now I'm placing this here. Yvonne, those applicators really are a blessing. It's, it, I was, um, it's really difficult, isn't it? Because obviously I work for Carnation, so it always sounds like I'm just selling for Carnation. But at the heart of all of this, I'm a crafter. And, um, you know, I love, I love tools that work. And the one thing I really like about Carnation is they don't go excess on their tools. What they give us is what we need. And I like that. Um, but what they do then is go for the ultimate quality of the things we need. So I'm getting the best but it's kind of paired back to, to the things that I will use. And I like that. I like the fact that the applicators have been thought through and it's not the ball head fuzzy that we normally get, but an elongation so I can work with my filigree. I like that. I like the fact that they play to their strengths. Now I'm just gonna pop in some florals here. And I'm just gonna poke them through just between those leaf fronds just to build in that L, that corner shape. I don't want to cover too much of the boot, but I do want to just bring it through. And now I'm going to call, call these tones because this is busy. I'm bringing in those cool, cool tones. There we go. Rachel, there's a link there for you if you need it, lovely. Have you got it? There you go. That'll take you to it. So I'm just gonna leave it with those three. I could add another one in for height. I don't think I want to. I think I quite like, do I want to? I think I do want to. Let's place it through. Now, the stars of my show are my gnomes and I want them to obviously be together. Two choices here. We ground them out and it makes sense to me to ground them because this has got the little mud line. What I do is keep this free edge and that free edge is important because with that free edge, 
I then get to play with a little bit of white space. I can use my bow line for it if I want it. I've got options, but I like the fact that we're playing with one corner and we're letting that filigree just breathe and play its own song with the shadow underneath it. It's gorgeous. So let's go in with some everyday glue. So we're just grounding her. And then we'll put him in. And I'm gonna put him so his arms face in this way. Oh, look. Let's put, <laughs> they're so cute. I love them. Isn't he cute? So sweet. Now, other choices. If I want to pop in my little field mouse, I absolutely can. He could be sitting at the top of the boot. He can be hidden behind these little leaves, just about to crawl out towards those gnomes. So we just get that little poke and I like his little face just coming out. So it just gives us a little bit of a little bit of something something right there's an extra little visual and i think this all plays into carnation's ability to have a little bit of tongue in cheek as well and their playfulness because they give us characters that are playful that allow us to just have a bit of fun with them don't they so i'll just raise his head little point of adhesion remember we can add we can't take away there he is now I've got this beautiful bow line, but I don't know if it's gonna to be too busy. And I will tell you right now, before I put this down, I'm gonna work, work it out live um, because I don't know if it's too busy or not. And so I'm gonna work it out. But just to mention to these bows, cause I really love them, that they just, you've got the half line. I could have half a bow if I wanted. So you can have like the pretend visual is if it's coming off the edge of a card. So for instance, that sort of way, but I can put them together and I can work out whether or not I want that bow line. And I quite like it because it mirrors the reflection on this diamond side and it just takes away a little bit of the filigree. So sometimes where this is, there's a lot going on with the filigree and I love it. I absolutely love it. If you feel like it's too much, sometimes adding more can provide you with less. There's a way I want to phrase that and I can't work it out in my head. I want to reduce the busyness I want to make it cooler. And so I do that. If you see how that's quite busy and now less so, sometimes adding more can reduce the visual depending what we're using. So I'm just gonna place adhesive on both sides of that. Take my bow line, put it together. And then I'm just going to use my pokey. Push, push. Use my pokey again at this side, just at the edges to turn it down. So it goes up and then down, we create a wave. I'll just baseline it to that diamond, that little lift. Super cute. This collection's really strong. I love the Crafter Select. There's something about just playing with old collections, bringing in new stuff for them, reinvigorating everything, refreshing our memories on what we own, why we own them, how we play with them. And it's really, really lovely to have had the chance to work with Wild Wonders again, live on air because I love it so much. But to look at that boot and to look at those things is just ridiculously sweet. So one final look at the board so you can see everything that you're getting because this is the last call for it. And we are going um, obviously back to full price at midnight tonight. So just to finally show you that artwork, I can't put it onto my glue, I do apologize, so I'll leave it where it is there. Um, you've got the gorgeous artwork for the boot, you've got your grounding device, you've got your gorgeous little signpost or um, sty, whichever wants you call it, you've got your little shovel, you've got your trowel as well. You've got your two gnomes and they're so beautiful, the colors are gorgeous, aren't they? And then you have obviously got your clovers. This is a massive, massive die set. 
And please do remember that it's not just the boot, you're also getting your mats and layers so you can make your card base. You can make uh, your, you've got obviously your card base, your mats, your layers, and your vignette. The vignettes will be available on the Carnation Craft website. I don't know when it'll either be later today or tomorrow. Um, and if you've bought the die today, the likelihood is you will probably receive it tomorrow, which means you can get playing with it straight away. I've had an enormous amount of fun. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. We love having your company and it's been a real pleasure this morning. I love the Crafter Select. We are back live. Here we go, Miss Tiz Tuz, help me out. It's my time. It's your time. So we're back on Monday yep. with a brand new launch, which is Chasing the Sun, yes. 9 a.m. Just, just be there at 9 a.m. We'll tell you all the other days. Or to times. let you know, I will do a Facebook Live on Sunday at 4 p.m. for Chasing the Sun. Don't miss it. It's the most awesome stuff. You're going to love it. And that will be four o'clock on Sunday afternoon. So Chasing the Sun is 9 a.m. and it's going to be two days. So it'll be the 7th and the 8th. Yeah. And then we have Going Wild at 11 on the Friday, which is the 11th. Yeah. And then we can update them. About and then we can update at that point. Uh, Christine, where can I get the bow from? You can get that from the Carnation Crafts website, which is www.carnationcrafts.co.uk. Type in the search bar Wild Wonders. It will bring up all the dies from that collection. Everything that you've seen work it, me working with today is, other than the gnome from today's show, obviously, uh, and the boot, everything is from the Wild Wonders collection. So everything you've seen, the card shapes and all the rest of it, will be associated with that set. So please do go and look from there. Um, uh, Dawn, I've just had delivery of my order from yesterday. Can't beat Carnation. Can't beat it. Thank you so much for your company. I will see you on Monday. Uh, well, I'll see you on Sunday at four o'clock, actually. Uh, but until then, take really good care of yourselves uh, and be nice to yourselves. I'll see you soon. Bye.